Today we're taking a first look at the Canyon Stoic. I've been trying to get one of these for three years now, so I'm so excited to feature this on the channel. This is one of the most requested bikes, and for good reason, at the price point, it's pretty insane what you get for this thing. I've been super curious how this bike rides. Let's check it out. When you buy Canyon, you buy direct from them. And so your bike will look exactly like this. Kind of, kind of fun little messages. Welcome to a community of passionate cyclists. So yeah, Canyon is direct to consumer. There's no Canyon dealers. So you can't test ride these unless you go to an event that Canyon happens to be at. I've been trying to throw a leg over one for years and I haven't had the Stoics at any events that I've been at. So this is pretty exciting to show you what it's like when you buy one of these and how it comes and what you have to do to put it together. Owner's manuals, shock pump. Ooh, all the tools you need to change it. These are cool tools with a torque wrench. I like that. It makes sense because you're not buying it completed from a bike shop. You have to build it up. So it comes with everything you need to build it up. Let's see if I can build it up with just these tools. So this is the Canyon Stoic 4. It retails for $2,100 at the time of filming. I'm really digging the matte green paint. I like matte paint more than gloss. They're calling this their Enduro Hardtail. These bikes are really hard to find in stock because they're so popular because of their price point. Internal dropper routing there. External brake routing. Good job, Canyon. This looks like it has a massive amount of tire clearance. Huge, huge yoke right there. We got a couple reminders on here, like do not pull on the brake levers until the wheel is on. Pike select, NX derailleur, descendant cranks, NX shifter. I don't have a problem with NX. I much prefer GX, but NX is way better than SX. And honestly, I don't mind SX the first three weeks and then it starts to get bad. Oh, I like this stem, kind of a top loader stem. That's pretty slick. Yeah, so this stem is really cool. The top plate fits right on there. Nice mechanical fitting there. Okay, this sounds like a small thing, but it's so many companies get this wrong and Canyon got it right. These little indicator marks to center it actually work with the stem. So many times it's incompatible and it's like underneath these bars so you can't even see them anyway so props to canon for thinking ahead of that that's a small thing that everyone should do but so few do it i do think canyon's website could be improved you got to dig like five layers deep to find info about a lot of bikes let's see if the front is set up tubeless or if there's a tube in there almost always i get these bikes and there's tubes in them yeah, there's a tube in here. All right, so I'm gonna have to pull the tube out. Personally, I wish companies would start shipping bikes without the tubes installed, with just the valve installed. So all you have to do is squirt some sealant in there and inflate it. That save a lot of people a lot of times. And if they want to include the tube, which I'm fine with, just pop it in the box so we got a spare. It's a first world problem having to pull tubes out. But when I do it five times a week, it does make me wonder why are we doing this? I'm hoping 90% of Canyon Stoic owners are going to run these tubeless and aren't wanting to run tubes. So just save them this hassle of doing this. I hope this rim strip is truly tubeless compatible. No, darn. The rim is not taped. It's just got the plastic rim strip in it. Man, I hate it when companies do that because now that means uh, you guys are going to have to go to the shop, buy tubeless tape, buy valves. You know, that's gonna be 40 bucks when Canyon could have done it for $2. I mean, they could get these valves for $2 each and just include tubeless valves on it. If you're running a pike, you're gonna be running this tubeless. So darn, I'm not willing to put my tape on here just for the review. So I'm gonna run it tubed for the review, which is a bummer. That's one way they are able to save a couple bucks, but that's one thing I'd recommend that they change is they actually include all the stuff to make this tubeless ready. At least it's a tubeless ready rim and tubeless ready tire. That's a good thing, uh, but it's not quite as ready as some other bikes that come with the tape and the valve and you just throw your sealant in. In fact, some bikes come with sealant and so you just splash it in there, air it up and away you go. 
That Magic Mary is a legitimate front tire. I actually haven't had a Magic Mary on a demo bike before. So far this tool's been great. And I love that the torque specs are written everywhere. So I just pulled this off the dropper and it says after step seven of the quick start assembly guide, I didn't know there was a quick start assembly guide. My background is building instructional tutorial videos for corporate America. And it's always fun to see how well or poorly other companies do their instructional videos. The instructional videos were solid. They're a little hard to find on the website. And uh, I, they were a little bit hard to navigate on a mobile, but had good instructions. Very little speaking, showed everything really well. I wasn't able to find where there were steps, like step seven or step eight. This isn't my favorite dropper lever. I've used similar ones. They just feel kind of funky and flimsy. I love that they have tied your dropper cable to this piece of cardboard to keep it from falling in there. That makes assembly super easy. Hmm, this isn't going in as easily as it showed on the video. There we go, got it. They made that pretty easy with how that was fished. Now with it all the way down, I got a lot of cable up here. If this were my bike, I'd end up shortening the cable. But since it's a review and it's going back to Canyon in a week, I'm going to keep it long so the next reviewer can run the dropper higher if they wish. It's a nice long dropper. Interesting looking seat. It looks futuristic, but it looks super uncomfortable. We'll see what it feels like. I'm impressed with this little tool. I'm going to hang on to it and keep it around in the shop. I like the rear axle on this frame. Kind of got some funky cable routing going on here. I'm going to try and tidy this up. Cables are often left a bit long on a lot of bikes. I like their cable ties, those look nice. All these could use to be shortened about four inches. These look like long cranks, 170s, okay. Almost every bike comes with 800 mil wide bars. That's far too wide for most people. Some of you do like 800s. But a lot of people will tell me, hey, I bought such and such bike, it just doesn't fit me. And I talk to them and I say, have you trimmed the bars? And they're like, what do you mean? And I have to explain that bikes come with 800 millimeter wide bars, but they're meant to be cut down to the size of the rider. So this comes with 780 mil bars, and I'm gonna trim down to 760. Every review bike I review has 760 bars to keep it consistent from bike to bike. I just use a pipe cutter. These are aluminum bars, pretty simple to do. Trimmed off one centimeter off of each side. Last step of the build is to put some pedals on. It does not come with pedals. Most bikes do not. I'd say 95% of the bikes I get do not come with pedals because pedals are such personal preference. So one thing I did have to do was tighten the dropper cable and the tools that came with it. You're not able to do it. You need two wrenches on it at once. If that happens to you, you're going to have to find an Allen key somewhere else. But still, that was pretty good. It did the whole thing with the tools that it came with. Let's walk through this real quick, what you get for $2,100. bucks. we have got Alex rims. But I don't even know what hub this is. This is a house-branded hub. We've got Schwalbe Hans Domp in the rear and Magic Mary up front. Great tires for an enduro bike. Aluminum frame. This is a size medium. I'm 5'6 with short legs and a long torso. We've got NX derailleur on the back here. We've got Truvative Descendant 170 mil cranks. We've got a 1x12 SRAM NX shifter. We've got Guide T brakes, four piston hydraulic brakes, RockShox Pike Select. Really tidy looking bike. We've got a Canyon brand dropper. A lot of good looking stuff going on here. This thing's got a lot of tire clearance on this frame. I'm curious if a 3.0 will fit. Every once in a while we get lucky and we can fit big tires in these. That's a heavy rear wheel. Really heavy. All right, that impressed me. We got a 3.0. Not rubbing. Oh man. I'd run it. That means most people should run a 2.8. Let me show you. Dang, this is a 3.0 on a 45i rim, you got a good seven mil clearance with this Bontrager XR2. This side, probably four mil clearance. Not a ton over there. Up top, we got five mil clearance over there. 
five mil clearance over there. It's kind of close to that zip tie. There we go. Bravo Canyon. So two eights, I'm going to say you could if you wanted to. Wow, that's impressive. So yeah, two sixes, zero problem. Two eights, zero problem. Three O's on a 45i rim like this, it's close. If you live in a muddy environment, I still would, but most people shouldn't. That's impressive they were able to make that much clearance. And if you can do it, why not? There's no downside to making the clearance as long as you don't have other compromises. Some really cool stuff going on here. I like the components. Uh, it's got one of those holes in front of the bottom bracket where all the cables come out. Not crazy about that, but it's okay. Aluminum frame, really great spec for the price. Like compared to a Trek Roscoe 8, which comes in very similar price, 100 bucks less on the Roscoe 8. The Roscoe 8 has a better engaging hub, a better drivetrain, but a worse fork. And personally, I'd rather have the better fork with the worse drivetrain and worse hub because it's cheaper to upgrade a derailleur and shifter or a hub than a fork. Forks are not cheap, so I always recommend buying the best fork spec you can for your budget. Still, we got to ride this thing and see what it rides like, but I'm pretty impressed for what I'm seeing for the price. All right, let's get this thing on the geometer and measure the geometry. 427, rear center, 452, reach on this size medium, 775, front center, wheelbase, oh, right at 1200. Head angle, 64.0. I always get a slacker head angle when I measure from the stanchions than the actual steer tube. Yeah, this measures at 64. Quite slack with a 140 fork. Effective seat tube angle right here is 75.7. Not bad, nice and modern. So yeah, pretty close to the website. Seat tube length is 428. I'd love to see that a centimeter shorter, especially on a hardtail. We have a 64 mil bottom bracket drop. Wow. We have a 630 mil stack. Um, a little bit shorter than I would have expected with a 140 fork, but we do have a small head tube. All right, those numbers are pretty close to what we're seeing online. Total weight came in at 32.9 pounds with these Chester pedals. A little bit on the heavier side, but for the price, I'm not surprised. That's where most under $2,500 bikes are coming in at, especially with big enduro parts on it. My main business is bike consultation, and I work with people one-on-one -on -one and help them pick the perfect bike for their riding style, terrain, and budget. So if you need help wading through this sea of endless specs and tons of different models, and you want some unbiased advice, doesn't matter to me whether you buy a common saw, or a Canyon or a Specialized or a Trek. I'm not making money based off you buying what's in my shop like a local employee would. So I'm happy to offer unbiased opinions on all of these so you can pick the right bike for you without any bias. If you're interested in that, it's a service that I charge for. I do it over on Patreon, patreon.com slash hardtail party. That supports my channel and allows me to make more of these videos. So if you enjoy the tech geekery and learning and the deep dives that we do, support it by becoming a patron today. I'm impressed with this bike. Now on the website, this Canyon Stoic 4 is specced with a Dior drivetrain. I suspect they're having supply chain issues getting all of those drivetrains in, so this one has a SRAM NX drivetrain. I like both. I'd probably choose the Dior over the NX. I'm happy with either. Both of them work fine for me. Price is great for the spec that you get. Build quality looks really good. A couple things I don't love, like I talked about, it's sort of tubeless ready. You still need rim tape and valves. I wish it came with that. That'd be a great upgrade. Um, I also don't love these big ports in the frame where the cables come out, but that's more personal preference. Cable routing is pretty good. I like that it's under the chain stay for the derailleur. Too many times I see it on top and then the chain just bashes your housing and gets that thing all bent up. Love that it's full external brake routing. I love that it's got a standard post mount 180 in the rear. I love that. No running adapters. It just starts out beefy. I love the Pike Select fork. I love the tires that come on this thing. I love that it's got a dropper. The Canyon home parts, the bar and stem look solid. I don't love the dropper lever. That's the first thing I would probably change if I owned this. And I wish the seat tube was a little bit shorter because I can't reach the bottom of the pedals with this dropper. I think 430 is a little bit longer than most companies should go on a size medium. I mean, anyone can raise their seat, but not everyone can lower it. So I've got particularly short legs. 
I could size down to a small and probably be slightly more playful and I'd get that longer dropper in there, but I would lose the stability at speed. I love the tire clearance. I think it looks brilliant. I love the flat matte paint. This thing looks like it's ready to go to battle. Next, we're gonna take it to the trail and ride it on my home trails of Sedona, Arizona to see how it stacks up against the 80 plus other hardtails that I've reviewed. If you're interested in my unbiased, guidance and consultation for your next bike become a patron today i've been riding for over 25 years and i love working with people to help them pick the right bike it makes a huge huge difference if your primary criteria for a bike are best uh, drivetrain for the price or color i'm not going to be able to help you but if you want a bike that has the greatest ride feel and geometry and spirit and vibe and energy and personality to it to match what you want that's where this service is super helpful. So if that's you, become a patron today. Thanks for watching everybody. It's been fun showcasing this bike. Can't wait to take it on the trail. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.